the Steve Parr route was this bloke called Steve Parr who did a certain number of summits at a particular point in time and set a route. 32 years ago, perhaps, I was lucky enough to meet Steve Parr through a mutual friend. Uh, Steve died 30 years ago, disappeared in the Himalayas. Steve identified 61 Lakeland peaks over 2,500 feet. And he was first to do it, a stunning athlete, for 43 hours, I think. And then it was never really done for years. And what tends to happen with these challenges is somebody will beat the distance, the, 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 what they did, and add one. And that's happened a few times, and we're now at this point where there's 62 peaks to be done, which is a phenomenal number. Uh, I'm Angela White, uh, I'm uh, now 62. I live uh, in south of Kendal in the Lake District. People in the running community often do things in, like um, you know, running 21 peaks on their 21st birthday or 40 on their 40th, 50 on their 50th. Um, and uh, I don't really want to leave any later. <laughs> I think 62 peaks in my 60 second, for my 60 second is probably enough. <laughs> I discovered running nine years ago and that was part of a whole series of steps, small steps that I took to change my health. So back in my late 40s, I was at a point in my career where I was working very long hours. Um, I seemed to have more and more projects and roles thrust upon me and I found myself working long hours. I had no time much for myself because I still had children at home. Not having time to myself, not only was I overworked, I became overweight. Uh, I was extremely unfit and uh, quite unhappy. I kept getting glimpses of this sort of overweight, unhappy person but not doing anything about it. And then eventually I started to get a few health issues myself. Just made me stop and think, if I didn't look after myself, then I wouldn't be able to look after anybody else. So I started to take these small steps. And the first one of which was to uh, go out for a short walk in the evening. And I, <laughs> I felt incredibly guilty taking that time for myself. Where I live, kind of can't go anywhere unless you go uphill so um, I was you know, noticeably huffing and puffing just taking a short walk but slowly over time I started to find that I felt a little bit better. Hello. Heat and humidity levels will be on the up again this weekend as we start to see increasing amounts of sunshine across the UK and through the rest of today into tomorrow more of you will see skies like we've seen. The challenge for the Steve Parr round is that you do it in 48 hours. Well, there's, I wouldn't have a, a, you know, anybody's chance of, of doing it in 48 hours. I'm not fast. I'm absolutely rubbish at coming downhill. Um, going uphill is not so bad, but I'm you know, not particularly fast at any of it. I did as a sort of homage to Steve. I went off last October in 67 hours, something like that. And I'll be overjoyed, and I'm gonna tell her this, if she beats my time. Running over 100 mile and 45,000 foot of climbing is quite a big challenge. It's a huge, huge undertaking. Um, there's a massive amount of climbing. It's quite technical running, it's fast. You know, in, in, in places that she's got to keep a good pace to get round in a reasonable time. Um, she's starting the day on Sunday morning, she wants to finish by Tuesday evening. So just getting round the whole, the whole thing is just a huge endurance challenge. Here though, there's a massive amount of uh, climbing to do and that's going to be difficult. Yeah, I just, I just can't imagine doing what she's, what she's about to do, it's just amazing. Yeah. So Angela's training 
has not gone to plan because of the the post covid kind of lockdown and unlocking so she would tell you that she's not done enough she's not had enough mountain time she's fit she's she's trained but there's no um substitute for being in the high mountains and on the rough terrain and and that has been difficult for her to uh, to get over recent months So what's Angela like as a person? She's one of these people who likes to help other people. Not, not forcing help on them, but likes to understand what's going on in their world. Definitely what she's doing is motivated by how it can benefit other people. And actually that's replicated directly in this challenge. This isn't really about her going up and down 62 mountains. It's about demonstrating the, the, the small steps and the, the behaviors behind that. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Angela. I'm just having a drink. Oh, today. sorry. <laughs> She's under pressure, you know. Most people would be satisfied just doing, you know, one day of massive ultra running. But for her, it's always got to be more two days, three days. Um, and yeah, I'm in awe, I suppose. It's quite as warm as forecast. Come on, Angela. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody prime them. <laughs> 59, was it 59 to do? Yeah. Thank you. It's an interesting sport crew because um, there's some very dedicated people obviously doing the uh, with her at, the, at all times, um, but also there's a lot of groundwork goes on at the roadside, but also we're trying to be quite low impact with it you know there's a lot of logistics goes on behind the scenes and she's done a lot for other people um, I've done stuff for her when she did joggle and um, as did Mel um, on Mel's Wainwright so it's, it's a reciprocal thing that we all do. I wouldn't be able to do it if it weren't for the people that are for whatever reason are, you know, choose to support me I've made some really good friends Thank you so much, it's been an absolute blast. Really, really enjoyed it. No problem. Enjoy the next section. Keep it going fast, Angela. We'll see you tomorrow. Very determined, very scientific and analytical. I've never known someone who prepares so well. And if you think back to two years when she did joggle, so running 800 miles on the flat on tarmac, this is the opposite of 100 odd miles up and down. So she recovered from that, took her time to recover. As I say, she applies herself and she's gone out and wrecked and trained specifically for ups and downs. So two years ago, three years ago, no hope in hell's chance of doing this, because to be honest, it's pretty crap on the rough ground. But she's gone on and put that time and effort in and worked at her weaknesses, and that is Angela. very full because I've been force fed and force watered for the last uh, I don't know how many hours it is. I was fascinated by what my body would allow me to do. So I started pushing my own boundaries, running further. Uh, never faster, unfortunately. I think if anything, I got slower. But what I found was that the, that I could go long. So the longer the event, the um, the better I I seem to be able to to do and keep going. Back across steeple. I'm a bit nervous about this section. So that's a massive success. 
Angela on the top of steeple. How are you feeling, Angela? <laughs> feeling good? I've got jelly legs. <laughs> <laughs> wow, oh but look at that. What a spot. Angela's biggest challenge so far is probably the sleep deprivation. You know, she's, she's going well, but she's getting tired, and, which we all knew she would, I think. Morning, Angela. How are you feeling? <laughs> You're looking wonderful there. You are. Angela's had to face some of her biggest fears whilst just training for this. So steeple and large rake, um, really technical, really steep ascents and descents. Um, so she's, she's had to face those fears already on the recce's and she knows what's coming, so she's got to get through them again. So Lord's Rake is the most direct route up onto Scarfell and it's sheer vertical. It's now crumbling away, really deteriorating route up there. And Angela is real fearful of a sort of steep edges, open, open spots where she can see how you know the drop below and she she's tried to avoid it she's tried various routes but she knows that this is the most direct route up there um, she's going to be bricking it really but she'll do it and i think that's what i admire about angela support's important because of the distance that she is running it's huge and we wouldn't expect her to carry all her kit um, there's a lot of food and drink supplies and uh, for her to carry that over that distance would just be it's too much. So um, also just um, it's, a, it's a team effort as well. So um, to run as part of a team and the, um, everything that comes with that, the camaraderie and the, uh, the backup and everything else. So that, that's, that's one of the main reasons, yeah. It's not just a physical challenge for Angela, it's been a real um, mental and emotional battle just getting to where she's got and I think, um, so I'm, I get emotional because she's, she's just a really inspiring woman. She's a gutsy old lady. <laughs> Don't tell her that. <laughs> think she's gonna do it there's no doubt in my mind that she'll do it it's the time there's the difficult thing now um, so yeah it's touch and go whether she'll meet the schedule she's This is a brutal route, it really is, it, it's, it's, it's just a difficult route. There's lots of other rounds and so on that people do and they tend to skip along the ridges quite nicely joining the dots. This one has to, because of the nature of the, the, the challenge of the highest, specifically the highest, it's missing various peaks and having to loop back round to pick them up, others up. And that's, it, it's torturous, it really is a difficult route. My thermal regulation's gone. I've had my clip and clothes on and off so many times. So, but mind you, it's been absolute, you know what it was like on Weatherland this morning? Yep. It's like that on Fairfield, absolute shocker. And it started raining. Is it windy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's windy. <laughs> So do I think Angela's going to finish? Now, at, at this point, we're a long way in, and yeah, she'll finish. That's, 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 unless somebody cuts her leg off, that, 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 then she'll finish. Will she finish in time, in the time limit that she set herself? That really isn't clear, but will she finish? Yeah, she has to crawl, she'll crawl to the finish. Um, but I don't, I don't think we're going to be making it for last orders tonight. Uh, you're on, on top of the pain management. I suspect I won't be able to for some of it. I haven't got any. Actually, I have, but I'm not taking anything on. I've got, I've got a long way to go yet. Could you do it? 
<laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a difficult one. It's what it, 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 that's the that's the attraction of these sort of challenges because it's um, it's difficult to know if you can or can't do them because they're such an undertaking. And I don't think if you knew you could do it, you probably wouldn't want to do it. So that's the challenge and find out if you can do it. Testing yourself. It's such a it's such a long way and it's such a huge thing. You know. Um, it's just a, a ultimate respect to Angela for actually taking it on. She wants to crack on, she wants to get on straight away. Does she want beans on it? Uh, I'll, I'll wait. I'll, I'll just go and find out. I'll okay. there. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is you want to do, it may not look like it would have done when you were in your 20s, 30s or even in your 40s, but you can still do it. You can still go out and explore that hobby um, or sport or whatever it happens to be. I'm feeling extremely tired. I'm feeling so tired that I know that I, my batteries are down to about two or three percent. If, if I were some sort of device, which means I've got just enough left to know that if I don't stop now and charge them up a little bit, everybody's going to be in trouble. It's not ideal. Far from ideal. The wind is terrific. How else would you rather be, yeah? Up here with those two. It's important always to be asking questions, whatever it's about, looking for new things, learning new stuff. It keeps your brain alive. Um, I'm curious about what my body will deliver for me. And so I keep pushing the boundaries to see, you know, some people would say, well, you know, you're trying to break yourself. No, I'm not trying to break myself. I'm just trying to see what, what we can do. When you do these sort of things, you always go through bad patches, and Angela will know that because of the experience she's got. But running these sort of, sort of distances, it's sort of difficult just to keep that um, going and and, um, and and just coming through them. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do it. I'd... Okay. If you've not got the flexibility, the other options are actually more difficult. That's all. She's hurting, she's really fatigued. Um, you, you can tell that by the, 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 her patterns of speech and the way she says things. Um, and also she, she's biomechanically hurting. She's got a particular problem with a, a ligament that's uh, giving her grief. She's been out all this time. So uh, she's, yeah, exhaustion is, the, is probably the key problem.
from the conversations I have with some people, it seems that they see retirement as a time to slow down. When in actual fact at 60 or 65, if you were to look at what your life expectancy is at that point, certainly for me, my life expectancy at 62 is another 25 years, which is a whole career's worth of years. I don't plan to sit down and slow down and relax when I've got 25 more years that I can be doing things that give me pleasure, that can support other people, that can continue to contribute to society. The only limits to what you want to do are in your own head. I've, I've faced, those, you know, faced those fears in lots of the things that I've done. So it's the fear that you know the fear that you won't be good enough. You know when it comes to running, the fear that I'll be at the back, I'll hold everybody up, people will laugh at me. You know, family or friends will wonder what the devil I'm up to. Well, yes, I think that was down to you. I think you said it would be good. <laughs> but you said, you said well, what about doing it in 62 hours? I have no idea whether I can do it in 62 hours. I, um, I, I, like, I like the fact that you know, it's 62 out 62 in 62, and it would be fantastic if I could achieve that. But actually, it would be fantastic if I can just complete it anyway. Um, yeah, that would just be... That would be a huge achievement, uh, and I don't want to put. I, I, when you when you're setting out on any goal, um, it's great if you can achieve it, but you have to be careful to always celebrate what you have achieved. Yeah.